have sinned and come short of God's goodness. But God didn't use that against us, did he? That's why we serve a true and living God. If you're a little cold in here, raise your hand and we'll turn down because these air purifiers keep the air a little cooler than it was before. But God is still blessing us, isn't he? God is still good. Even through the pandemic, God is good. Even through the times of depression, God is good. There's so many of us going through the different trials and things in life, but God is still blessing us. So we come up now to the high water mark. We come up now to the gospel message. We come up now to the entree and the dinner. You all had your soups and your salads. So now we come up now to the meat, to the entree. All right, and that is the gospel. We got to have the good news. See, 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 the church is the only place where you get good news. You listen to the news on TV, you don't get no good news. You go to work, you don't get good news. But, but the church mission, and that's what we were talking about in Sunday school. The church mission is about the good news. The ethos and the pathos of the gospel is the love of God. And when you love God on the vertical, you'll get it right on the horizontal. You'll love man. So we come up now to the gospel message. I call your attention, you all know that I'm in the greatest chapter in the Bible, and that is Romans chapter 8. Praise God. Romans chapter 8. Today we're going to look at verses 12 through verses 14. Uh, those of you that have your Bibles, please stand. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We will use for a theme this morning, from slave to son. Sons with a S-O-N. You all may be seated. Uh, when we look at this message today, I am reminded about a TV program that I used to watch some years ago, Different Strokes. Uh, it was a funny show to me because uh, Mr. Drummond uh, was a man who uh, his maid had passed and his maid lived in the projects. And uh, she had two sons, uh, Arnold and Willis. And so when she passed, her wish was that her two sons go to live with Mr. Drummond in his penthouse. So now the, the thing that made this show so hilarious and funny was that these two little boys who had grown up in the projects, now they go to live in the penthouse. And all of the struggles and, and, and comedy that came out of this uh, sitcom was them adjusting to live in the penthouse. So, so now we have been living uh, spiritually in the project, some of us. And now God, through his infinite wisdom, has moved us into the penthouse. Now, now, now we have to act like and live like folk living in the penthouse. You know, so my friend owned a condo, and my wife and I used to go downtown and stay there before we sold it. And it was way up high in the building. And when my wife and I would get on the elevator going up to it, they wanted to know who we were. Who, who are you to live down here? So my wife and I would always have a good time talking to these people about it because they wanted to know, well, who are you? Are you some kind of basketball player, or football player? Or act? No, we just some plain old folks that know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you have to get used to living and acting in the penthouse. So that's what we want to talk about today. How do you behave in the penthouse, going from slave to sons? So today we're going to look at this particular scripture. Today I will teach 
we have been adopted into God's family. And this adoption that God has made for us is irreversible, can be reversed. And I'm gonna talk about that later as to what that means. So now, the first scripture that I read, uh, verse 12, it says, once again, remember this therefore, we talked about that before. Anytime you see Paul writing and he says, therefore, he's grabbing everything that he's talked about before and he's summing it up and he's bringing it forth and putting it into what he's about to say. So now Paul says, therefore, he's talking about all of these things that he said and what I preached about last week. What he preached about, he said, uh, he said, but if the spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit dwelling, because his spirit dwells in you. So now what he's saying, all of this that he's talking about, going all the way back to chapter five, justification by faith, all going up to, to chapter seven where man was struggling uh, with the law and all of the kinds of things as we go. He said, now therefore, all of these things, but now the interesting thing that he's gonna do in these particular verses, he's gonna teach us as Christians how to live. How do we live in the penthouse? How do we act as children of God? What is it about you that are different? If I were to take a chair and come out and sit in front of your house and ask your neighbors, who lives in that house? What would they say? You can tell me later. Today, uh, my outline will be my first point. We owe no debt to the flesh. Number two, we can, we can put all of the bodies, the mortify, we can mortify all of the deeds of the body. We can put all of these things to rest. And my next point, we have been adopted into God's family. So now verse 12 says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. In other words, that old life that you have, you see, when you are a debtor, when you owe a debt to somebody, you owe somebody something, right? You know how them bill collectors call, right? They call you because you owe them something, right? You know I'm right. So anyway, but now, Paul has spent all this time in chapter 8 telling you that you're not going to be condemned, all of these things, let you know who you are. Now, now, you need to realize that God has sent his spirit and God's spirit is in you. Now, you owe no debt to that old life. You owe no debt to that project life. You owe no debt to that old life. You, in other words, you are not obligated. Oh, I know your friends, when you go around them, they're going to talk about how we used to kick it and all that. But listen, you don't owe no conversation to that old life. Don't talk about how you used to kick it with them anymore. You are not obligated with that life anymore. You don't kick it anymore. Am I right about it? You're a new person, isn't it? You're, you're no longer in the flesh. So you owe no obligation. So, so that, that's what he's saying here. Therefore, brother, you are not debtors. Not to the flesh. You, 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 are no, oh, you are not paying any more attention. You are not concerned. But the biggest thing about it, coming into this, you're no longer controlled by it. You no longer think about it. You remember we went over the things in Galatians uh, chapter 5, all of the things that, 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 the, that the flesh had you thinking about, all of them ugly things that you were thinking about doing and all that kind of stuff. But, but, but now you, you owe no debt to that. You, you don't think about those things anymore. You don't go to those places anymore. You're not, you, you're not dancing to that kind of music anymore. So, so you owe no obligations. That's what it's saying. So you're a different person. Those old things are passed away. All of the things that you are doing now becoming. So you see, the thing about the Bible is all the scriptures come together to support one another. So we see here now all of the things that you used to worry about, you don't have to worry about them anymore because, see, God is going to supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. You, you, you got a new way of looking at things. You don't have to worry about bills anymore. You, you don't have to be thinking about how you're going to make it. So see, God has already, he, he, and he, he, you don't have to worry about the people like that in the world because he said, greater is God that's in you, that he 
that is in the world. So, so all of the things that, that, that you've been down about, all of the things that you've been worried about, oh, I may have to go play. What is that big uh, bang thing they got with the lottery now that all got all these folks lined up trying to get? Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. But I didn't get no ticket. I don't know about you. But, but the thing about it, see, see you're not obligated because, see, God is going to supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. Uh, my son came home another day. He said, Dad, you know they got a line out there at Best Buy. It's all the way down the street and around the corner. And then they folks say they're going to camp out all night. And Jerry said, guess what? I think I know what they want, and I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of game he was talking about. Yeah, but, 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 but you know, you, you already got it. So, so you don't hold, you, you're not obligated to it anymore. You don't have to pay the debt of that old sin life anymore. You don't have to be worried about trying to please them old friends of yours. You don't have to worry about them if, if they don't want to come over to your house anymore. You don't, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's what I'm saying. You, you, you don't have that debt anymore. You don't have to pay that debt. So stop worrying about it. Whether or not they're going to like you anymore because you're a Christian and trying to, no, no, no. All that's behind you. God is going to supply all your needs. Now, so all you have to do is look to the hills for which cometh your help and your help coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. That's all you have to worry about. It's how God going to make a way for you. You can trust God. You're a child of God. His spirit is in you. And we're going to let you know because I just said in the last verse that you are sons of God. And then you need to understand who you are and where you live. I just told you. You live in the penthouse. You don't get off on the first floor in the elevator. <laughs> so, 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 so you get on the elevator and you punch the penthouse. You somebody. So I said, you don't have to worry about all them old friends. So, 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 so you're not trying to please the flesh anymore. You're not that person anymore. Uh, so then it says, verse 13, which is one of my favorite verses. Because it really, it really, I told you, this is going to teach you how to live. How do you live as a child of God? It says, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Did you hear me? If you live after the desires of the flesh, you got the flesh, you got the spirit, and you got the soul. But if you live after the desires of the flesh, just think about it right now. If you had done everything that your flesh tried to get you to do, where would you be today? Am I right about it? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I got some amens behind that one. Because it says now, but death, just think about it. How that flesh tried to get you to drink. If you would have kept on drinking, cirrhosis at the liver and down that road and all the kind of stuff that would have happened to you through drinking. You, think, you know how, 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 you death, how, how the world tried to get you to be a glutton. Now, it's one thing to eat, but it's another thing to be a glutton. Am I right about it? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The, the, the flesh tries to get you to do things that will tear your body down. Stay out all night doing things that's hurtful to your body and to your mind. And, and you know how, how, how it is. So, so now we see that if you live by the flesh, you, you've seen a person that's strung out on drugs. You can look in their face and you can see death. You know, so he's saying, you, you're going to see death. But, but it says, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. Now, pay attention. It says, but if ye through the spirit do mortify. Mortify means to put to death. It didn't say that you had to go to God and pray to God. It didn't say that you had to turn all of these things over to God. It said there are some things that you have to do. I'm not talking about works righteousness. I'm talking about there are some things that you have to do as a Christian. You have to do what you can do. You say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? All right, I'm going to give you a few. First, it says, we know who we are. So if we know who we are, First of all, we realize that we have, we were born and shaped in iniquity, and we got that sin nature of Adam. But also when we confess Christ, we took on that new nature, his desire. So, so, so now we as Christians, we as people with the spirit of God in us, there are some things that we have to do. First it says, 
flee. I'm just, I just picked out a few in the Bible that I could think of off the top of my head. First it said, flee fornication. Run from it. Don't get caught up in it. Don't get faced with it. It says, flee fornication. There's something you can do. Take off running. Get away from it. Sex outside of marriage, that's one definition of fornication the way we see it in America, but for, fornication is per near all sexual sin. It said, flee from it. That's what the Bible says, run from it. If you're a child of God, some things you can do. And then it says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelief. But there's something you can do. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I don't want to care about how good somebody can kiss. I don't want to know about what good a job they have. I want to know, do they know Jesus? Are y'all out there? I don't want to know how they can slam dunk a basketball. It say, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And this is not just talking about marriage. It's talking about going into business. Any kind of thing. You, you cannot be unequally yoked with an unbeliever because it won't work. Are y'all out there? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, so it says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And, and then it goes on to let us know. Abstain. Abstain from much food and alcoholic beverage. Don't eat yourself to death. As my wife uh, Grandmother used to say, don't eat so much, folks hate you. <laughs> and then it said, abstain from alcohol, abusing alcohol as a beverage. You are a child of God. There, there are some things you can do. You don't have to pray to God and say, God, I, I want to stop this eating. I just stop it. Just stop the drinking. And it says, put on the new man. Take off that old man. Just like you're going to take off some old clothes. Now, 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 you wouldn't take a shower and put on the same dirty pajamas, would you? Would you? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't know. That's pretty nasty, isn't it? You wouldn't do that. So it says, put on the new man. Now, now you got a new person to put on when you're trying off that old man, take off them old dirty clothes that you used to kick it and go to the, all of those places. Take them off. You have no more obligations. You don't dress like them. You don't look like them. You don't talk like them anymore. Put on the new man, new man. who was created. The new man. See this new man I got on. He was created in righteousness and holiness. That, 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 that's what you're talking about when he said modify. I'm telling you what you can do in order to modify, in order to put the flesh to death. You got to put it to death. So you got to, then, 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 then it says put on the new man that's created in righteousness. Put away lying. It tells you that. Stop lying. So if you're going to stop lying, what you going to do? Tell the truth. See, the Bible teaches us, if you're going to take a garbage can and you're going to empty it, you got to put something in it. Because if you clean up a garbage can and put it out in the alley, open, somebody's going to come and drop some more garbage in it. In. So I said, stop lying. Tell the truth. That's how you modify the flesh. He said, stop lying. Tell the truth. And then it says, speak the truth. Put away anger. Stop being so angry about everything. Oh, you get up in the morning. Oh, I'm just a morning. I'm not, not, not a morning person. I'm just angry. And, stop that. <laughs> stop program, your, programming yourself to do that. I try to get my wife sometime to go with me in the morning walk. She said, I'm not a morning person. You any kind of person you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I right about it? That's, that's, that's a programming thing, ain't it? It's programming yourself to think like You don't have to think like that. Read <laughs> that right out. <laughs> I got amen after that. 
Stop programming, your, programming yourself like that. Stop that stinking thinking, and, and, and you can be any kind of person you, you want to be. So, so it says, it, it, it's talking about how, how we can program ourselves. And I told you to stop lying and start telling the truth. And don't let the sun go down to being angry. Modify the flesh. Stop going to bed mad. Stop going to bed not speaking to your sisters and to your brothers and all the folks you need to be talking to. Uh, let not corrupt communication come out of your mouth. You can stop that cursing. I got to get my curse words together. I know they're going to say, stop that. <laughs> Cut it out. You don't need to talk like that. I see them people on TV. I turn it on a, a program and all they say, I've turned that off. Nobody have to talk like that. And if your parents send you to school, then you come back talking better. Am I right about it? If somebody doesn't send you to school, you, you need to come back using some school words, don't you? Come back talking like you've been to school. Talking and saying all the curse words and all that kind of stuff. It, it, it says, don't let that corrupt communication come out of your mouth. And then it says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy God has put his spirit in you. And God has put his spirit in you, like Sister Barnett said in Sunday school this morning. God has put his spirit in you to help you to do the things that you couldn't do on your own. So you pray to God to do things that you can't do on your own. So, so God has put his spirit in you, and his spirit will allow you to walk water and do things that you couldn't do on your own. So God has put his spirit in you, and because God has put his spirit in you, you can do all these kind of things. But listen. You can grieve God's spirit that's in you if you're still doing these things that we talk about. The Holy Spirit ain't going to work in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit ain't going to work in you if you're going to bed mad, if you're getting your cursed words together, uh, if you're doing The Holy Spirit said, listen, I'm in you, but I ain't going to do nothing. I go home, if my wife is angry with me, she, she may not fix me in the dinner. She's still my wife. She's still in the house. <laughs> she ain't left. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit is still in you, but it ain't going to do nothing for you. Because the Holy Spirit can't do nothing for you. Because the Holy Spirit cannot participate in that stinking thinking that you're doing. And God has put his spirit in you. Are you still saved? You're still saved? You, 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 you see, if the spirit is not in you, then you're not a child of God. You're a child of God if the Spirit is in you. To see the Holy Spirit in you when you do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will convict you. But if you're not a child of God, see, Michael Corleone, uh, when we, when, 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 and the Godfather, when he was standing up there for that baby blessing and killing all them people on the other side of town, see, 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 he, the Holy Spirit didn't convict him of them folks that he was killing on the other side of town, but, but he was there for a baby blessing, you see, because gangsters can love their families, but they don't love anybody else. They think they got it right on the vertical, but they ain't got it right on the horizontal. I just want you to understand that. That's what I'm talking about today. Are you all with me? Can you modify the flesh? Can you put it to rest? Can you put it to rest? And then it says, put away all bitterness and anger. Now, these are things. I just named a few. These are things that you can do. It's all in the Bible. These are things you can do as a child of God. This is the way that we have to live. So I just didn't want to leave you hanging in that verse when it said, because that, that modification, that, uh, modify, that's not a word that we use every day, is it? We don't go around saying, oh, modify. <laughs> you don't talk like that. But I wanted you to understand how you can put these things to rest. You are a child of God. You need to put all of those bad habits to rest. Paul has let, let you know who you are. You no longer live in the projects. You live in the penthouse. You can sit up there when my wife and I was down there in the penthouse. We could watch the fireworks. Not from looking out the window. We could sit in the living room and look out there and see the fireworks. We was living in the penthouse. And see, all them people that was down there where I look, got to go out there and say all night to watch, we didn't have to do that. We just had to sit there and look out the window. Are y'all with me? See, when you live in the penthouse, you, you get some privileges. See, God is letting you know that you are in the penthouse. So, so he said, he said, modify the deeds of the body 
you shall live. Now he's talking about just living. He's talking about living the abundant life. And when you live the abundant life, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about winning the lottery and then you're going to have all your relatives calling you up trying to get some money from you. I'm not talking about living that kind of life. I'm talking about the abundant life. Living a good life, living the life that God has given to you, living a healthy life, walking in God's divine health, having peace, shalom in your home, having your family in subjection, having God to bless you with all the blessings and, and that, that he has for you. That's the good life. That's what God wants to bless you with. He's keep trying to bless you. And then this 14th verse says, for as many as of you are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Sons of God. Many of you that are led by the Spirit, you are the sons of God. In other words, God has adopted you into his own family. And because God has adopted you into his family, that adoption is irreversible. You see, when you go to adopt a child, when you go to adopt a child, the biological parents, once that adoption, you, you see in 72 hours if a child is born, the adoptive parent has 72 hours to realize whether or not they want to give that child up. And when they make that decision, and then you get that child and you keep that child for six months and you become a foster parent, and then when you go to court and that judge tells you that that adoption is legal, he lets you know that that, it, in other words, that judge is saying that the biological parents has no more rights. Their rights have been relinquished. That child is yours. You are, that child is adopted into your family and that adoption is irreversible. God is telling you today that you are adopted into his family and that adoption is irreversible. Satan has no more power over you. Satan can't get to see you. Can't, Satan can't come and claim you. You, are, you belong to God. You are adopted into God's family and because you are in God's family, you I can inherit. You stand to inherit everything that Jesus stand to inherit. You somebody. God as your father. Jesus as your big brother. Hallelujah. And you live in the penthouse. Oh, you ought to be shouting right now. You ought to be happy right now because he's letting you know that, that you are somebody. But you got to act like it. You got to live like it. You got to be like it. You got to walk, talk, and act like it. And you got to mortify that old person. Now you wouldn't buy a new house with all the amenities in it, and then go back over to your old house and leave. So that's what it's saying here. You're a new person. You're a new, you're a new person in Christ, and you have been adopted into God's family. And that old life, that old devil, that, that, that old thing that you used to do has no more power over you anymore, no more power, no more control over you. In other words, you have gone from being a slave to becoming a son. You are now a child of God. And because you are a child of God, you see, see, God's going to take care of his children, isn't he? Because you are a child of God, you can cry, Abba, Father. And because you can approach God, God say, because you can approach God, if, if those who are called by my name would humble themselves, those who are called by name, he's talking about Christians, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. God is saying, listen, Shannon, you are in my family now. I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about a lot of things. I'm going to take care of you now. I went to Calvary for you. I sent my son because I love you and my son died and put you back in the right relationship with me. Now you're back in the right relationship with me, so why don't you act like it? Are you out there? Are you out there today? God is calling because he loves you. You're in God's family. You're somebody. The invitation is not extended. The invitation for you to leave the projects and come into the penthouse is being extended. I don't care where you've been or what you've been through. God said, I can forgive you and I love you. God say, I love you so much, so much.